Good evening. Where we are here in front of the laptop and the mirror not just to see ourselves but to see this beautiful hotel room where I can find rest after a long day of travel. Travel through the Natya Gully Hills snow as you see as a Swiss national with my Suzuki car with my laptop and with my precious Bible I find myself in the Shelton Hotel of Rahul Pindi with a extraordinary executive deluxe bed for rest. Not just this, but a heater, a TV which I don't use, and a extraordinary bathroom. Look at this. Just fit for me, double bath and mirror, towel, everything. Let's go and see, but most important, let's read about a precious story from the Holy Injil. The Injil of Matthew. Matthew, the tax collector, Jesus recruited as his disciple. He writes down 28 chapters. But in chapter 1, we have already read, we have already studied about the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is born just after we have his family line. Since uh, Abraham and David. And this is now how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary and Joseph had been promised to get married. Are you married? Are you single? Would you love to get married? Joseph loved Mary and but they did not start to live together just before they started coming together to be married. It became clear that she was pregnant, going to have a baby. Can you imagine? You're getting married to someone. She's going to have a baby and it's not from you. You know that. Something must have happened. Something has, must have gone extraordinarily the wrong way. She became pregnant, as the Bible says. What does the Bible says on this page? She became pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Look at this here. Her husband, Joseph, was a godly man. He did not want to put her to shame in public. So he planned to divorce her. How? Quietly. He planned to divorce her quietly. Let's look at this. As Joseph was thinking about this, he was thinking about it. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. So while Joseph was sleeping, an angel appeared to him in a dream. And what did he tell him? He gave him a good message. Because he had to act upon it. He did not want to put her to shame in public. The angel said, Joseph, son of David, he was a descendant of David too, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Why? What does the Bible say? The baby inside her is from the Holy Spirit. Do you think the Holy Spirit can produce a baby in a mother's womb? Doesn't it need a father's seed? Yes, normally it has to be so. What do you think? Why was this baby not of a father's seed? Let's see what it says. You must give him. She's going to have a son. You must give him the name Jesus. That is because he will save his people from their sin. He will save them from their sin. Jesus means Savior. Yeshua. A Jesus. Jesus Christus, Jesus Masih, Jesus Christ. 
all of this took place during about what the Lord had said would happen. He had said through the prophet. Now, Matthew quotes Isaiah, the prophet of the Old Testament, lived hundreds of years before. What did he prophesy about Jesus? Let's see. The virgin is going to have a baby. She will give birth to a son. And he will be called Emmanuel. Let's the phone ring. Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? It means God with us. So Emmanuel is not like his real name, but it is like a nickname. Joseph woke up. He woke up from the dream. He did exactly what the angel of the Lord commanded him to do. He took Mary home as his wife. So he protected her culturally and becoming a stepfather for a baby. He was not the real father, but he knew it was from the Holy Spirit. Now, he did not make love to her. That's very important until after she gave birth to a son. So he did not have a sexual union with her because he knew it should be, she should be kept pure because it says in the Old Testament a virgin will give birth to a child and it shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. So Joseph gave him the name Jesus. And Jesus, Yeshua, Yesu, Jesus, a Jesus is the name which the Injil, the Bible, and Revelation, and the letters, the epistles, and the Acts of Apostles all say the name which is above every name. Under each name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess for the glory of of God the Father. So, are you one of them who believes in the name of Jesus for his very salvation in eternity? You are really a blessed person. I would say you are blessed forever if you have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you won't really have eternal life. That's what the Bible says. Not just this day, but forever.